scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Make the word of God a priority in your life and you have set yourself on a course for supernatural living. I guarantee you on this. The Bible contains the wisest perspective on all matters. The Bible, Scripture, contains the wisest perspective on all matters. Now, in truth, I will tell you, you will find a lot of theological debates as to um, the fact that there may be other books of the Bible and it's not only 66 books. I agree. I agree based on theology. But the Bible lets us know that this that has been canonized is sufficient to communicate the whole counsel of God as far as the excelling of the believer is concerned there is nothing that you will ever encounter in your life that does not have a solution based on scripture so the information here is sufficient enough it says many miracles Jesus did which are not recorded in this book so it tells you there are others that are not recorded he said but this has been recorded that you will believe and that in believing you will find life the truths here are sufficient to administer life and victory as far as the course of your lifetime is concerned are we blessed knowledge the knowledge of scripture and let me tell you this the seed for the harvest of knowledge is to be able to set yourself to give yourself to study and to give yourself to learning the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth preachers we must study Believers, we must study. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. They are life to those who find them. They are more than information to those who find them. They are life. The Bible is not a lecture manual. It contains the character of God. It is a revelation of God's ways, his modus operandi. When you understand scripture, you are enlightened. Dominion, the word exousia that is translated authority, it means delegated power that is based on light. The power to stand and represent another based on that information that that one had. That means if I send someone to stand for me, I would not just say delegate for me until I tell him what I know. Are we together now? That sharing together. So you come to a point of illumination. Number two, very quickly. The second key that activates the supernatural. Are we ready? Yes. The second key is faith. You must have faith in God. You must have the faith of God. Mark 11. We'll start reading from verse 22 mark 11 this is jesus about to teach us his classic on faith jesus said unto them have faith in god for many of you who are familiar with the writings of men like papa Hagen, they would interpret this as have the faith of god next verse he says this is how the character of faith in god or the faith of god works whatsoever thou shalt say so in faith there is a saying be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart 
so the heart is part of the equation for faith and shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith the general rule is in verse 24 verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray so we see that prayer is part of the faith equation believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them you cannot manifest the supernatural if there is no faith what is faith your conviction faith is beyond believing the word believing comes from the Greek word pistis it means conviction but it does not stay with conviction you can believe and yet you have not manifested faith faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word there has to be action for it to be called faith and the action will be in accordance to the conditions he's created you don't just act at random every promise in scripture has a a predefined condition attached to it if you want to prosper in the kingdom you want supernatural prosperity and the blessings of god it is your responsibility to find out the principles that connect to that possibility there is he that scattered the bible says and yet increase it there is he that withholdeth more than is meat and tends to poverty the diligent hand shall be made fat so these are all the tools that make for prosperity in the kingdom there is a place for diligence there is a place for favor there is a place for the anointing there is a place for sowing and all of these things put together when you know them and you act upon them you put pressure on god's integrity and then you begin to see a manifestation of the same most believers believe but they do not have faith if i ask you for instance to come up here and you keep speaking and say i am coming in the name of jesus i am coming in fact i'm running i'm in a hurry i'm coming you heard me and you are communicating with me but you have not come so many people just continue to confess and there is a place for that it's from the word homologio it means repeat as you heard to confess means to to echo it again as stated by the word but it does not mean that you just confess over everything and sit down there are things that you need to stand up and move you need to act deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you you must be careful to do not just to learn faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said the power is in the doing are we together now when he commanded the ten lepers go and show yourself to the priest he said the bible says as they went not as they wished not as they were deciding it was as they went turning water to wine john 2 he says fetch and go and serve the bible says as they were going that risk was what turned the water to wine can i tell you the truth if you will ever raise a dead body you must have the faith to stand before one if you cannot have the courage to stand before a dead body forget about resurrection and i can tell you firsthand in my life I've stood in front of a few dead bodies usually when people die people are quick to call me and you know try to pray for their resurrection first before eventually they give up so I get this quite honestly maybe at least once every week someone has died apostle we believe something can happen and I agree I've used it to exercise my faith uh, I don't know if I've shared it here the first time it was the anatomy lab of ABU Zaria you know they have a mortuary there someone died and they took me there and closed the door yes sir i saw dead bodies and i was wondering now which one am i going to pray for faith that's right faith i laid my hands on that dead body and it was as if i was touching a stone had been embarked 
in the name of Jesus come back to life in the name of Jesus come back to life I said everything quoted everything declared remember try to remember how Jesus raised the, the son of the, the widow had named Lazarus all these people nothing worked do you know to be honest with you at the point I stood there and I told them I said you people should open the door for me the next time would be the mortuary of the teaching hospital now they locked me there because usually they don't allow that so they smuggled me in and closed the door so many dead bodies some lying on that and I was watching you ah I was afraid until fear Do you know let me tell you one of the ways that God takes away fear look up please let me teach you something one of the ways that God takes away fear is to bring you face to face with what you are afraid of you will stay with it so long you will stop being afraid of it I prayed and prayed and nothing happened and I just used the opportunity to think about my life at least let me not waste that moment before they open the door everyone here was once alive oh god teach me to number my days that i may apply my heart unto wisdom how did i get here i'm teaching about faith hallelujah you must manifest faith now for a long time i have a few more minutes for a long time there has been a debate especially between the charismatics and you know certain believers that we may call respectfully speaking maybe word of faith it's been that there are people who choose listen carefully there are people who choose faith and there are people who choose the holy ghost are we together the pentecostals and the charismatics generally so the word of faith people for instance now this is not we're all word of faith you understand what i'm saying there are people who just believe that all it takes is just your faith leave the holy ghost once you have faith let he can go places and there are those who believe forget about faith faith is nonsense once you have the holy ghost just move the bible has never dichotomized faith and the holy ghost let me explain to you the ministry of faith and the Holy Ghost please look up I'm holding here a bottle of water the bottle is faith the Holy Ghost is akin to the water are we together now the power of the Holy Ghost has to flow through that funnel called your faith so the assignment listen to me faith has no power in itself faith is just a system of connection you must believe faith but not idolize it there is there is no dogma out of faith faith is simply a system of connection faith connects you your situation to the power of god but the agency that really brings the result is not faith it is the power of god it is his divine power that gives us all things but when we say it happened through your faith you are right because it was your faith that connected you are we together now yes can I can I use one example with money will you be sad if I bring out money praise God because there are people who are not in the mood for this kind of joke <laughs> praise the name of the Lord now watch this this is a hundred dollar bill are we together if I want a bottle of water watch this and this is a hundred dollars this hundred dollar bill connects me to the possibility of taking this water is that true so if you ask me how are you going to get this water i will lift this and tell you this is the assurance i have that i can get the water but what do i really need which of them do i need which one brings the satisfaction which one brings the nourishment it is not the money but without this i cannot access this that is the union between the faith and the power of god faith and the power of god don't dichotomize it no it takes faith to access the power of god it takes the power of god to provide solutions faith does not provide solutions faith is like currency currency can feed you you are right but currency is not food are you getting this example now yes 
So, if I ask you, how do you think you'll be able to buy or pay for that house? You lift this. If I ask you, how did you purchase the house? You say, by God's grace, I had a hundred thousand or fifty million or whatever to buy the house. But it is, you are not going to live in the money, you will live in the house. This is how faith works. The assignment of faith comes to an end the moment the power of God is released. Are we together now? You have to learn this. This is what I want. The miracles, the breakthroughs, the increase, whatever it is. But this is what will bring it. Faith. So, I do not ignore this and start glorifying this while I'm dying of thirst. This comes so that I can use it to purchase this possibility. So when God wants me to have more of this, he gives me more of this. Are you seeing now? There is, there is, no, there is no fighting. When God wants me to always have this, he will make sure I always have this. But this is not really what satisfies me. This connects me to what provides solution for me. If you understand this, there will be no, there will be no confusion as to the ministry of faith and the ministry of the power of God. So when I say you need faith, it is true. Like you need currency. You don't go around the market or a mall strolling around and just desiring everything you want without the requisite level of finances to purchase that reality is that true so when you build your faith what are you doing you are elongating and extending and strengthening your capacity to draw the power of god it is true so when he says where is your faith in other words my power is available but that container that funnel to receive it remember that oil plus a small vessel does not equal profit profit is equal to oil plus a very large vessel large vessels the problem was not lack of oil it was that the capacity to carry the kind of oil that would bring that woman out of debt was not there so if i am building my faith it's like creating more vessels i'm not going to invent another oil the oil can grow to match the size of that that container that's how faith works so when you commit to building your faith listen carefully you are opening up yourself to more of the power of god more of the activity of the supernatural are we together i've even gone ahead of myself number three and the last key is the anointing second peter chapter one from verse three in fact let me give you one more before that the power of words just back up a bit the power of words i omitted one point here the power of words you cannot truly access the supernatural in silence the realm of the spirit is voice activated you manifest the realm of the spirit through words words in prayer words in word based declarations the realm of the spirit is activated through words everybody say words the bible says where the word of a king is there is power you want to walk in the supernatural words that you now declare over people for instance be healed in the name of jesus and at the point where you are speaking the power of god to bring that healing is now released are we together now every time jesus needed to perform a miracle almost every time there was a place in the equation of that miracle where words came forth lazarus he said come forth and he that was dead came forth words that means if you want to walk in the realm of the spirit there is no place for silence you must learn to declare not declare your problems not declare your pain declare scripture and command the realm of the spirit by the authority given to you in and through christ to respond to you accordingly and i will not be
silent I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I will Please look up The Bible lets us know That we live off two things One bread Two words Jesus himself was teaching and he says the only way man lives is by bread and words bread and words if you have bread alone you will not live effectively if you have words alone you will not live effectively you want to live effectively in this kingdom you need bread for the physical realm words for the spirit realm bread and words so as i eat i speak no wonder you is the same mouth that you need to access both of them both bread and words require the same channel to remind you that you need both to survive bread and words so when i begin to declare over my life the lord is my light and my salvation i begin to declare over my destiny in the name of Jesus, my going out is blessed and my coming in is blessed. I decree and declare the Gentiles come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. Nothing dies in my hands. I'm speaking with this understanding that words are powerful. They can create, they can adjust, they can manipulate things to be consistent with the will of the Father. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God, but he is called the word of God. Are we together? When you pray, what makes prayer powerful is that it is a manifestation of words. Whether praying in the spirit or making prophetic decrees, petitions in the spirit. Listen to me. If you ignore the prayer ministry, you have ignored the opportunity to take advantage of words and create possibilities with them prayer is powerful you want to access the realm of the spirit you must obtain grace from god to pray and please hear me in this conference if there is anything attacking your prayer life you must obtain grace this morning to fight it with a bulldog determination do not forbear with spiritual laxity. It will destroy you and give Satan access to rob you of an opportunity to live a supernatural life. Say amen, please. Amen. I believe in prayer. I truly believe in the ministry of prayer. But I believe in prayer with understanding. Not shadow boxing. I believe in prayer. The Bible calls certain kinds of prayers vain babblings. Jesus was giving warnings about prayer. And he says, when you pray, there is a protocol that you must follow. But hear me, he spake a parable to the end that men ought to pray. If you are an angel, that's all right. If you are a spirit alone, that's all right. But if you are a man, there is no record of God praying. He does not need to pray. But when God became a man, he prayed. And now that he's seated as a man, he's still praying. Even in heaven, Jesus is still praying. So all men must pray. You don't pray because you are on earth. You pray because you are a man. Because even in heaven, whoever is a man in heaven there must pray. Jesus the man, seated at the right hand of the Father, still makes intercession for the saints. Are we together? You must obtain grace to pray. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the night. Pray when things are all right. Pray when things are not all right. Pray when you have breakthroughs. Pray when there are challenges. James 5.13 Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. The biblical recommendation for afflictions of all sorts is to pray. Are we together? Let him pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray with understanding. 
ladies and gentlemen there is no other way if we ignore the ministry of prayer prayer in the spirit prayer engaging scripture in strategic warfare prayers there are gates and there are thrones there are dominions mandated by darkness to stand and rob you from accessing your glorious destiny nothing will change by default time does not change things time only reveals it does not change you must engage the realm of the spirit in prayer unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come someone in one minute can you pray pray and declare in the spirit and in understanding i decree and declare that i begin to walk in the supernatural you are declaring by the spirit of god everything around my life is supernatural supernatural finances supernatural ministry supernatural grace supernatural family supernatural advancement in the name of jesus I grow past the natural course of things. Supernatural living. Hallelujah. Let me give us the last key. A quick recap. Number one, the first key to accessing the supernatural and manifesting the same is knowledge of scripture, the word of God. Number two, faith. Faith in God number three the power of words words that come in prayer listen carefully god bless you you can help me drop it in the offering envelope thank you words that come in prayer and word-based prophetic declarations lamentation is not prayer lamentation is just a human way to express pain ah this is how my life is you are not praying no can i tell you this god is touched with the feelings of our infirmity but he only moves in response to his word god does not move in response to our feelings god is touched with our feelings but because he also submits to his word he will only respond at the instance of his word the last is the anointing mm. The anointing was given to us by God to help us manifest the supernatural. The power of God. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. Your breakthrough will be according as his divine power gives. Your lifting is according as his divine power gives. Listen to me. The divine power of God at work in a human vessel is what transforms you to a sign and a wonder. You are able to walk and manifest the supernatural when the anointing of the Holy Spirit rests upon your life. And believe me, I know what I am saying most people have downplayed the power of god because we have limited the operation of the power of god to just falling down and getting up so the moment you are able to have someone fall down and stand up many times we convince ourselves that that is the limit to the operation of the power of god the assignment of the power of god is to insist that everything in your life becomes consistent with the word of god the assignment listen to me the power of God has the assignment to make the word of God look true in your life. That means if there is nothing to confirm, the anointing has no ministry. Please understand this. The power of God has no ministry until the word of God goes forth. The assignment of the power of God is to stop the word of God from looking like a lie in your life. So when God says, I am lifting you, he sends his power the assignment of that power is to make sure by any means you do not remain at that position are we together now yes so if the president of a nation gives a decree and says there has to be sanitation or there is a lockdown for a day the president does not go around ensuring that houses are locked and shops are locked 
there is an agency mandated for that but they go at the word of the president the basis of their operation the basis of their arrest the basis for their release is the word of the president so if he has not spoken they cannot just come and hold you so when you decree as the king that you are in the name of jesus then the power of god is released to begin to produce the miracles and the signs and the wonders if he says i am blessed the assignment of the word of god or the power of god is to insist that anything that looks like a curse anything that defies the operation of the blessing that it be judged by that power are we together now this is very this is a, a powerful revelation if god says i am the head and not the tail then there is a dimension of his power that is released over that statement the power continues to trail and guide me if anything appears in my life that can make me the tail that becomes the assignment of the power of god it stays there to deal with that situation until it brings me back as the head if god declares upon your life that favor follows you that anointing for favor will rest upon you like a mantle and anybody who can bless you that anointing will force them to not ignore you the anointing has the assignment of insisting that they pay attention to you and attend to you until you match the level of the speaking of that favor the four lepers when a prophetic word came by this time tomorrow over Samaria, there were four lepers who were walking, but the power of God came to amplify their steps. And the enemies heard and they began to think that they had hired a few people to come and fight them and they ran away and left plenty there. That's the assignment of the power of God. And I know that someone who came for this conference, especially this morning, you are at a point in your life where there are many words over you but it looks like there is no performance you need to engage the power that makes that word come to pass otherwise you will keep piling prophecies that will make god look like a liar god is not a man that he should lie why is he not a man that you should lie listen to me uh, you you may have heard it in my teachings god became a man but he is not a man if god is a man then he must worship who created him he became a man but he is not a man men lie they don't lie because they are evil they lie because they are men <laughs> but god is not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should repent that means before god speaks he will vet whether he has the power to back up what he's saying everything that he said here he's vetted himself and found out that he has sufficient power to bring it to pass so when God says, Joshua Selman, you will be lifted above the nations of the earth and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. I believe him because the word is true, but I also believe him because there is a force behind that word that will insist that I do not remain small. On the strength of this, you can rise. This is why we have the audacity to come for a meeting like this and dare to say that your life will not be the same. This is why we can come for a meeting like this and dare to say that that situation that has stared you for a long time, that it can go. Imagine if it were just mere words. It would be dangerous to just give people mere words and information behind the things that we say. There is a throne, there is grace, and there is power that backs it. Blessed is she that believes, he says, for unto her there shall be a performance. Listen to me. If I take this water, I don't need to run to the lab and verify whether it is working correctly, whether it went to the right places. I trust the design and the wisdom and the intelligence of God. There is power that works there. Once it passes through my throat, I go and find rest. I do other things as proof that I know that God is intelligent enough. He's put this system. Imagine how long men live and yet they've never had to tear themselves open to verify whether digestion is happening correctly or not. 
and can i tell you this he took responsibility for your trust in him that's why he gave medicine and doctors so that in case there is any malfunction you have a right to outsource another drug and you can take it and by taking it it corrects everything and if it defies that drug should he not be responsible enough to say now that this is over i created this to function this way if drugs are limited then i can outsource from another realm beyond trees beyond water beyond injection i can bring another reality to keep you in place we are going to pray very briefly this morning i want you as you prepare to stand to believe that things will definitely begin to change in your life because of the reality and the presence of the supernatural the supernatural is an advantage that god gave the believer that we can command signs we can command wonders we can make tremendous levels of advancement in our lives if we move beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of intellect can i tell you there is a disclaimer though if you intend to walk in the supernatural then you must be ready to believe the things that science may not allow you may be ready to believe certain things that do not make sense are we together now it is not scientifically correct to dance and get breakthrough why will you dance your way to victory it doesn't make sense scientifically you work hard to get breakthrough but there is a mystery when you access the supernatural you must be childlike enough to subscribe to the formula that makes you to receive supernatural results please rise up on your feet from a human standpoint you don't give to increase no you keep to increase but in this kingdom it says you give and then you increase medically speaking you don't lay hands on a man and the man gets healed you submit the man through a therapy you administer drugs but the bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in one minute i'd like you to pray and ask the lord to grant you grace that you desire to begin to walk and live in the supernatural please lift your voice and pray you are a man of god here pray end time ministry requires the supernatural you will never truly 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 be able to command the kind of kingdom influence that you desire obtaining natural results you are a businessman it cannot be at the frequency of the natural lift your voice and pray please pray please pray just a few minutes this morning and we're done pray for the grace to build your faith the grace to build your faith the grace to build your faith your capacity to believe god your capacity to walk in keeping with spiritual principles declare over yourself the grace to pray the grace to pray the grace to pray the grace to pray, grace to pray. no spiritual laxity the fire and the grace to pray hallelujah please look up the final prayer that i want you to pray is for the kind and the level of power that must come upon your life to turn you to another man he says i have found david my servant and with my holy oil have i anointed him it takes the power of the holy spirit to transform you from a natural individual to a supernatural individual the results that you need to command have to be spiritual to bring glory to the name of the lord you are going to pray power from heaven 
may fresh fire and fresh power come upon your life come upon your business go ahead and pray please pray let it be from the depth of your heart fresh power from heaven the Bible says as he came out of the water which represents the word the heavens were opened and the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the similitude of a dove he was then driven to the wilderness fasted 40 days and 40 nights and the Bible says and he returned in the power of the spirit spiritual empowerment is a necessity if we must walk in the supernatural say unto God how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you ministry with power business with power career with power family life with power excelling in destiny with power someone is praying no more ordinary living no more ordinary business supernatural by the spirit the power of god has come to my life to give me an advantage hallelujah hallelujah please listen before i step down i want to encourage you hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.